The topic of women in academic science is a morass of contradictory findings and claims, with some people claiming that important gender biases are still holding women back, and others claiming that the playing field is gender neutral. So in 2012, Wendy Williams and I decided the time was right to have a consensus report, a report that surveyed this enormous literature and tried to, to wrestle it down to some justifiable conclusions. And we thought the most important thing in doing this was to have a diverse team of scientists prepare this report. So Wendy and I are both psychologists and we look to the field of economics to join the team since it's an important contributor to the debate over women in science. An exciting part of doing this entire report was working with Donna Ginther and Shulamit Khan. We found ourselves arguing a great deal, but the value in that was that all of us were forced to empirically support our positions, and we ourselves couldn't fall victim to our own biases about the issue. I love doing this research because we got to look at thousands of articles written on this topic um, in the past decades as a whole, and we got to decide which was better, which had larger samples, which compared apples to apples, and one thing that we found is that many of the contradictions were simply because the studies had been done at different periods of time. Things have changed. One of the things that's interesting to me about this paper, I've been studying women in science since 2000, and the dramatic changes and the dramatic improvement for women in terms of representation in majors, getting PhDs, and having academic careers is just really uh, remarkable. One of the striking things when you wade through these hundreds of analyses is just how gender neutral the playing field has become in the year 2014. Women and men generally are equally satisfied with their jobs. They, generally speaking, are hired, promoted, tenured, and persist at similar rates. Generally speaking, they're remunerated in terms of salary the same. They work the same number of hours per week. Their works that they publish have comparable impact in terms of how often people cite their work and so on. So that's really striking. It doesn't mean that in every one of these hundreds of analyses there's no difference between men and women. You can cherry pick. You can find some areas where men seem to be doing better than women. You can find some areas where women seem to be doing better than men. But when you're talking about hundreds of analyses, they really are the exception. And the predominant view is that men and women are playing on a gender neutral playing field. People ask when they hear the results of this study, how can this possibly be? How can you claim that the academy is gender fair? I grew up in an academy that was completely sexist. It limited my career and the careers of the other women I went to school with, went to graduate school with, and began at the assistant professorship with. And these people who make these comments to us are right. The academy used to be sexist, without doubt, and women's careers were limited by many factors. And what's important to note is that our report looked at the academy of today and that we looked at measurable, observable outcomes in the academy, such as how often women are hired, what they're paid, what is their rate of tenure and promotion, and how satisfied they are with their jobs. And these are very concrete outcomes that are easy to measure. There is um, plenty of material in our analyses that indicate that there are cultural forces at work, perhaps some biological forces as well in terms of early spatial and mathematical ability. But I think one of the really overriding things was just how disparate boys' and girls' interests are, starting at a pretty early age. You find about a quarter of the boys uh, as early adolescents saying they want to be a computer scientist or an engineer. It's very rare to find girls at that age professing that interest. On the other hand, girls are really interested in human medicine, veterinary science, uh, biology, law, the humanities, and so on. And so it's actually not very surprising that when you look ahead a couple decades, girls end up doing what they profess to be interested in in early adolescence, and boys end up doing more what they profess to be interested in. You cannot treat all science fields the same. So um, each is a separate market, and women's progress or lack of progress depends upon the field. Now we separated fields by whether or not they were math intensive or not, and that's life science 
uh, psychology and social science are the non-math intensive fields where you see at least half of the majors are women or more. In, in the case of psychology, it's almost 80%. And in the, the math intensive fields, which are geoscience, engineering, economics, math and computer science, and physical science, and there you see women's representation is less than half. Uh, in some cases in the 1970s, there were hardly any women majors. Now you see in engineering 20%, in economics 30%, geoscience more. So you see steady progress, um, but it's not at parity right now. And then we looked at the reasons why uh, women may not pursue these math intensive degrees. And when we look at that, it really it comes down to math early on in high school and middle school, the, the girls are not taking math courses, so they don't have the mathematic tools when they get to college to really pursue these math intensive majors. Now why that matters is that these math intensive degrees actually pay more than the degrees in life science, psychology, and social science. And so by avoiding mathematics, and pursuing non-math fields, women's economic returns to those degrees are lower. So the key to increasing representation of women in, in these mathematically intensive fields is early intervention. Our research has suggested places where policy intervention could possibly help getting more women represented in the math intensive fields. For instance, we're very convinced by the studies that show that even if you randomly assign girls or women in college to female professors, it makes those students more likely to major in those scientific fields. Now, as more and more women have entered this field and are becoming uh, successful academics in these fields, we expect this to change naturally because more girls will be taught by women. But also policy interventions could speed this process. We hope that women will greet our findings with enthusiasm and happiness and realize that what we're showing in this report through a lot of empirical analysis is that it's a great time to be a woman in academic science. If a woman out there is listening to this and hears that it's a great time, we hope that she'll join one of the fields of academic science for her career if that's in fact something she wants to do. It's a welcoming career for women today and we want that message to get out.